This is the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions, and uh, we can separate it into two equations using this expression, which consists of a radial part depending only on distance from the center and also an angular part, which depends on the two angular variables, theta and phi. In this video, we are going to focus on the angular equation, solve it and see what it shows. We want to find an expression that shows all the possible angles in which the possibility of finding the particle is higher. Y is the function that shows these probabilities. Now let's find the possible angles at which we might find our particle. The first step is to multiply both sides by Y times sine theta squared, which yields this expression. It seems a little bit frightening, but don't worry, it's going to get more frightening. Just kidding. And this is what we do when we face a frightening situation. We separate variables. This big guy is just dependent on theta and this depends on phi. The next step is to use the separated function into the equation. Pay attention to the derivatives. They are not partial anymore because we are dealing with single variable functions, big theta and big phi. Now look at these three functions. They can freely be used after or before derivatives because the derivatives don't act on them. So if we divide all the terms by y, we have this expression that contains three terms. Two of them are just dependent on theta and one is just a function of phi. The only way we can have two functions of different variables add up to zero is that they both are constant and cancel out. This one is the theta dependent function and this one is the phi dependent guy. They have to be constant and cancel out and we decide to choose m squared as our constant. But you might ask why m squared? I remember when I first encountered this choice of constant during my bachelor's, I was a little bit confused, but this is a choice made by some people during the 20th century, as you will see in this video. M is the quantum number for magnetic properties of the particle and People like Pauli, Heisenberg, Bohr, and so on may have decided to choose it when they realized it in uh, formulating quantum mechanics. So let's accept it as the efforts of some scientists who tried to make sense of the structure they were working on. So we have these two equations, maybe less frightening to deal with, and it would be more rewarding to start with the even less frightening one. This equation can be easily solved. For example, a good choice would be e to the power of i m phi. As you can see, it fits in the differential equation and is an answer. Look at the location of this point in the spherical coordinate system. These points all refer to the same point you can see in the picture in our space. And the function has the same value for all of them. So by using e to the power of i m phi in this expression, we get the allowed values for m, which are all integers. The differential equation for theta is more difficult to handle. This is a solution, in which PLM is the associated Lojourn function and PLX is the elf Lojourn polynomial expressed by the Rodriguez formula. Let's first find some of these polynomials for different L's. This is the case for L0. For L1, we have the answer to be x. And for L2, the answer is a second order polynomial. Now look at these polynomials from 0 to 7, and I'm going to talk about some of the most important points about them. The first thing is L's are non-negative integers, as you can see from the Rodriguez formula. Second, L determines the degree of each polynomial. And finally, these polynomials are either even or odd based on the parity of L. Now that we know how to find these polynomials, let's find Lojong functions. For L0 and M0, it is 1. For all the other amounts of M, it yields 0. For L1 and M1, we know that the function is x. For M1, this is the answer in this square root. And we have the same function for M1 minus 1. For m's bigger than 1 and lower than minus 1, this derivative yields 0, and all the other functions are 0. For L2, this is the polynomial. Find the derivatives and the rest of the story.
As you can see, for each L, we have two L plus one functions, one of which is the polynomial for M0, and others are different derivatives of the given polynomial, with an expression which is a polynomial for even M's, and a square root for odd M's. So far, we have talked about these functions as an answer to this differential equation. But this is a second order differential equation, and for each L and M, we should have two solutions which are linearly independent. The functions we saw are functions of the first kind, but there are also some other functions of the second kind. They are mathematically important, but as they have singularities at endpoints, they are not physically acceptable. For example, for L0 and M0, the second kind function is this. You can find its derivatives and put it in the equation for L and M equals 0 and see that it is a solution to this differential equation. But for theta equal to 0 or pi, the function blows up. The last thing we need to find is the normalization constant. Y can be normalized in a spherical coordinates using this integral. And now we need to deal with this amazing integral. The first thing you need to do to solve this integral is to change your variables to x, and the different integral changes into this one. And now you should solve this integral in which PLM is written like this. You can find the solution of this integral in mathematical methods in the physical sciences by Boas to be this number. And the normalization factor would be this. So we write our spherical harmonics in this form. In most textbooks, you will see a phase factor introduced by Condon and Shortley so that the harmonics will play nicely with the angular momentum ladder operators. And by using these ladder operators, we can write the spherical harmonics in this form. This solution is for positive m's, but what about the negative ones? They can be written like this, meaning that for negative m's, the phase factor is 1, and a conjugate suggests a negative in the exponential. Pay attention that PLM is equal to PL minus M. These are some examples of spherical harmonics. Pay attention that M is positive here, and the notation might be different in some textbooks. For example, in Griffiths, the notation is like this, and M can be positive or negative. And the phase factor is defined by epsilon, which is minus 1 to M for positive M's, and 1 for negative ones. And pay attention that these spherical harmonics are orthogonal. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the radial equation.